Just ahead on Crossroads, see how farmers plow through harvest after a rough summer. Indiana Wesleyan University gets ready for a big event to tell us what makes the state so great. We get a lesson in doggy manners. And local JROTC cadets take on the ultimate challenge at Modder Park. It's all just ahead on Crossroads. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Crossroads. I'm Randall King. And I'm Shaley Clark. And it's good to see you back here. It seems always like a long time when we take two weeks, but that was a special two weeks to kind of recycle and remember the 10th anniversary show, which was a lot of fun. Exactly. And we're still plowing through season 11. <laughs> that's, so that's right. Fun. Season 11 is moving on. I don't think we, in all the busyness of getting the 10th anniversary show, we mentioned to say thank you to our producers for finally getting us some new chairs and furniture. Set. Yes, new set. Thank you. Ten years of doing Thank the show. Thank you for the comfy chairs. I think this is the <laughs> first time we've actually had a, a chair that I can say is comfortable and works well on camera. I know, and it only took 10 years to get there. <laughs> <laughs> and my next request is to get real kind of coffee or water in here because this is And he's stunt. giving away our tricks. TV stuff. Giving away our tricks. But that'll come. We'll, we'll put in our One request. of these days, that'll be the next that's update. A, that's a low budget edition. Well, it is a beautiful time of year as we turn the page to October and even November, and we, we still have a lot of beautiful weather also around. In this fall especially, I don't know what has been with the leaves, but they've just been even more colorful, making up for the past few years, which I'm okay with, but this year has just been gorgeous. Yeah, well, I always love driving around Grant County this time of year, and you know, even though people say Indiana's kind of flat, it, it, we have lovely falls, and I like seeing the leaves, the leaves change. Exactly, especially when you're driving around. It, it's just breathtaking, and at least that's how it's been for me for the past few weeks. But I must say, get a little depressed sometimes when they bring in the crops, because that means now the field is going to be empty, but I know this year the farmers, I was looking at the crops coming in and thinking, almost didn't happen. And it certainly wasn't all positive. Ryan Flaherty ventured out to see just how much the weather from last summer affected our farmers. It's the annual dance. Farmers clearing their crops for the winter. Derek Middlesworth, a farmer and agronomist, has perfected harvesting to a science. When we're shelling corn, we can do uh, about 11 acres an hour. Eight, eight to nine hours is how long it'll take us to, to, to get this field harvested. Farmers knew this would be a rough year. The biggest concern throughout the summer is how's the crop going to hold up till we get to harvest. Uh, you worry about with a lot of water, stock rots, uh, things that might cause the, the plant to go down. On an average year, corn would consistently be about nine feet tall. But this year, corn is much shorter. In parts of the field, it's only two to three feet. It's saturated soils, uh, which contributed to uh, lack of oxygen um, in the soil, which didn't promote good, good healthy root growth. Um, and because of that, we just we couldn't uptake nutrients as well as we could. Uh, plants were stunted, uh, drowned out. This difficult season leads to unique challenges, but farmers will work together any way they can. If anyone needs help, they will be ready. You get north and you get east east of where we're standing right now. Um, it just was so wet through the end of June, even to the first part of July, where guys couldn't even get the crop in. No matter the weather, the farmers never stop, year after year. Then is it just a, is it a way of life? While the storms were not completely debilitating, farmers continue to show their passion and determination for the best life they know. It's, it's something that is rewarding just to be able to work in God's creation every day. For Crossroads, I'm Ryan Flaherty. I guess we will get some actual numbers in a few months, a few weeks to see what that looks like. I think it's probably going to be as bad as we thought, but I love seeing the hope of the farmers. Exactly, know? exactly. And especially when I did a story earlier and the farmers were saying, I'm having a hard time finding hope. I love now seeing that during harvest, you know, it wasn't the outcome they were expecting, but they're still staying well, hopeful. They come back in the spring, you know, that's that's the mm -hmm. cycle of, of farming and uh, it does kind of 
build a certain kind of character when you when you talk to Indiana farmers. They they weather these things maybe better than a lot of us think think they could. Exactly. When we come back, Shaylee and I sit down with Lauren Shaw and Carol Brown from Indiana Wesleyan University. We'll be discussing an exciting event coming to Grant County in the spring. Every child, every child, every need, child need love. When you smoke, every puff damages cells throughout your body. The latest research shows cigarette smoke contains over 7,000 chemicals that spread through your blood vessels, causing inflammation and clotting, restricting oxygen flow, and doubling your risk of heart attack and death. I'm Dr. Regina Benjamin, U.S. Surgeon General. With each cigarette, you have to ask yourself, is this the one that will cause a heart attack? If you really want to quit smoking, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That changed my life. At that moment, it hit me. This is why I joined the Guard. We're soldiers, always ready to protect our country. But we've also got communities, family, friends, neighbors who count on us. I couldn't believe it. I just saved a life. Somebody from my hometown. See what it means to be a citizen soldier at NationalGuard.com. One in three Americans suffer with a deadly disease. I was one of them. My disease was obesity. And after consulting with my doctor, I received the effective treatment I needed. Please join the Obesity Action Coalition to acknowledge obesity as a disease. Visit ObesityAction.org to sign an open letter pledging your support and for more information about how to talk to your doctor about weight loss and treatment options. Together, we can make a choice to end obesity now. A public service from the Obesity Action Coalition. Well, welcome back to Crossroads. There's a lot of talk always about how do you bring people to any kind of state and then keep them there. And Lauren Shaw and Carol Brown are here from Indiana Wesleyan University to tell us about an initiative that tries to do just that coming up in a few months. It's called Experience Indiana. And this isn't just an Indiana issue. It's an issue for any state, which is trying to keep people who maybe have come to go to college or come for different reasons to stay. So what, what prompted this and how did you guys get involved with the university? Well, Experience Indiana is actually funded by a Lilly Endowment grant that seeks to keep students in Indiana after graduation. And often when they come to college, they are only focused on the area where they're in school. And we're trying to expose to them all kinds of neat uh, places to visit, recreational sites, restaurants, uh, amusement, the arts that are available in Indiana that they might have not seen. The Lilly Endowment Grant has provided funding for us to be able to do that uh, at no charge to the exhibitor or to the, the visitor, the student or the business owner. So this event, which is coming up in March 21st through 24th of 2016, mm -hmm. is going to allow businesses to come in and, and show off Indiana. How can a business get involved with that? Yeah, businesses um, all around Indiana, recreational sites, attractions, um, entrepreneurs, uh, they can come on our campus and uh, display what they have to offer, their services, products, um, food, and um, we're going to display, or we're going to provide free space for them to be able to do that. Um, we have a website where they can go and sign up uh, free of charge and we'll provide um, meal tickets for them and we just really want them to have the opportunity to showcase what they have to offer to our students. Well, anyone, either one of you answer this question. What do you think are some of the, the, the big things that maybe a student coming from out of state or a student coming like to Grant County, for example, um, from a larger area in state, what do they not know about this area, this region, or the state that you want to showcase? Mm -hmm. I've noticed we have a lot of students that may be from Michigan because it's not that far of a drive, and so they may judge all of Indiana by what they're seeing here locally. But Indiana really does have quite a variety in terms of terrain. 
uh, quite different looking in southern Indiana. They may have never been on the canal in downtown Indianapolis or seen some of the beautiful arts that are available at the Indianapolis uh, Museum of Art. So just the fact that they're not able to get out and see those things is part of the initiative. I, I bet they don't know about the jobs either. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> not, not, not bashing Michigan, but you know, if you look at the two states and lots of the Midwest, Indiana has done amazingly well. We have, and um, Employee Indiana is actually the second day, March 22nd. Uh, 2016 of Experience Indiana. So each day has a theme. The second day is called Employee Indiana and that will be a job fair and we'll have employers here that will be looking to recruit to students. And then you also have a day that's going to be showcasing Grant County, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Grant County is going to be our fourth and final day of the Experience Indiana event. Um, we're looking for alumni uh, from IWU, uh, veterans in the area, local attractions, businesses, restaurants in the area that want to um, promote, you know, that they're in Grant County, uh, so students, faculty, and staff on our campus, as well as um, locals here in the area, uh, see all that there is, you know, here in Grant County, and um, those businesses and groups of people, nonprofits, can uh, present, you know, what they have to offer to us. And Lauren, you're a fine alum of a very fine program, <laughs> yes, IWU Communication yeah. and Theater Division, and you've stayed, so yes. what do you think you want to tell peers about the possibility of staying? Yeah, um, I graduated in 2013 spring um, from IWU and um, I just, I, I came here, you know, moving um, to the area after graduation, um, found a job at the university here on campus and, you know, was a little bummed that I wasn't going to Colorado or somewhere fun and adventurous, but really like staying in the area and um, doing research with Experience Indiana um, on all the opportunities that are in Indiana. I could spend five years just vacationing around Indiana, mm -hmm. um, just exploring all these opportunities, fun places to visit, restaurants, businesses um, around Indiana. And it's really fun and I want to go on so many adventures now. <laughs> and I really do love Indiana. I love Indiana and I want people to know how awesome it is and what kind of opportunities there are. And they really are, you know, within our own neighborhoods, yeah. you know, in towns right next to us, counties right next to us, and that's exactly what this event is going to do. It's going to open the eyes of people so that they can experience Indiana. And if you want to get involved with that, um, it is again March 21st through 24th of 2016. You can call 765-677-2520 to get more info on that. Maybe if you're a business that wants to get involved or you're a person that wants to come visit. And then also you can send an email at experienceindiana at nwest.edu. And I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about it and a lot of planning still ahead but some exciting times. And March will be here before we know it. Yes. We just have to get through yes. the cold months first before oh, we get there. <laughs> but there are places to experience winter. Yeah. The yeah. toboggan ride at Pokegan yeah. State Park. If winter's going to come oh. regardless, get out and enjoy <laughs> Might it. Might as well right? enjoy that's, it. That's a good one. Nice, nice plug well, there. Well, thank you, Lauren, and thank you, Carol, for joining us today. Thank you. And giving us all that information. When we come back, we're going to learn some new tricks. Get a lesson in dog training from the Mississippi Valley Obedience Training Club. I always wanted a family. I waited for one, but it never seemed to work out. I would see other families and think how great it would be, but at least we had each other. And then my husband and I had the chance to be parents. Two sisters wanted to be adopted together. Every day they fill us with hope and love, the things we thought we were supposed to give them. Call the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption. 800-ASK-DTFA. You'll change a child's life forever. There comes a time in life when you need government information. And you just don't know which way to turn. USA.gov. Find your social security benefits online. USA.gov. Our list of jobs will put you on cloud nine. USA.gov. Shop auctions for a used minivan anytime. USA.gov. It's government made easy for the people. Where's mom? Did she forget me? I wonder what happened to her. What if I get left here? Drugs and alcohol may make you forget your problems for a moment, but that's not all you forget. My mother worked hard to be in recovery, and I love her for that. For drug and alcohol treatment for you or someone you love, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. 
family programming for Central Indiana. That's your WIWU-TV. Welcome back to Crossroads. Everyone knows the dog is man's best friend, but that doesn't always mean they are on their best manners. Yeah, maybe <laughs> we talking about the owners or the dogs? <laughs> Both. <laughs> We're joined by some friends, Jackie and Brian Hanthorn from the Mississippi Valley Obedience Training Club, and they brought their pals here, Star and Blaze, who have been very, very patient while we've gotten the studio set up. And we want to see some things and we want to see what what basic things they can learn. I want to just say right off the bat, my parents, my mom took their dog to obedience training, a Labradoodle. Oh, she man. learned everything really well, mom and the dog, <laughs> except for stay. Oh. <laughs> stay, they didn't do real well, and Star and Blaze have done really well for that. So Jackie, real quickly, before we get some demonstration, what, what does every dog owner need to know about sort of coming to obedience training? Well, the first thing they need to do is actually learn how to read their dog. Um, know what it takes to motivate your dog. You, we have different skills. Some are treat motivated, others are toy oriented. So you find out what really trips their trigger, as I say, and whatever is going to set them going in the direction you need. Um, Star is very treat and toy oriented. <laughs> Blaze, on the other hand, he's mainly ball oriented. Ah. Uh, we kind of, um, the people who come to the club really want to teach their dog how to walk, um, the proper way to stand beside you versus lunging out in front of you and possibly getting in trouble with a dog they're walking in close proximity to so which star looks like the perfect dog to do that yes yeah, she is a good treat girl oriented so yes. what's some stuff you want to show us right off the bat here well we would like to show you um with blaze um the healing process and how you start off with that how you reward them okay um jump right in so blaze mm -hmm. go for it oh wow Wow. I'm so impressed. <laughs> no. Now, Jackie, how long does it take? I mean, a basic course, would, would someone get that good at heel? Does it just depend on the dog? It really depends on the dog and the owner. Um, I always say you can, you can get anything out of your dog that you're willing to put into it. We take our training very seriously, and I tell everybody, if you want your dog to do this, work with your dog more than an hour a day. You can break those up into four 15-minute sessions, three 20-minute sessions, but get that time in, that personal time with your dog, and um, it just, it's consistency. So that, I mean, the dog doesn't know that that's training. They just think it's fun play. <laughs> and that's all these have ever known, is training is fun. That's where I get my enjoyment at, and they really look forward to it. Mm. So what's a trick that Star can demonstrate that if someone brought their dog to Mrs. Cinema Valley Obedience Training Club, that maybe by the end they'd be close to mastering? Um, well, one thing you do is trying to get your dog to stand. I don't know if any of you have dogs mm. and have had to take them to the vet. A larger breed, they really want that dog to be able to stand versus squirming. So one of them we teach is stand, stay, and that way the vet can just kind of go over them all over, you know. Oh. Oh, okay. Same way within competition. So, so just basic standing still. Standing. And, and of course. I've, I've been a cat owner. You don't get that out of a cat. No, you don't get that out of a cat. 